Hey everyone, welcome to Jazz Tutorials. In today's tutorial, I'll be showing you some basic tutorial-ish type things. Um, I'm going to show you how to basically blend your photo. Um, this was actually a request by somebody via YouTube, so I'm going to help them out and hopefully help somebody else out in the long run too. This is a very basic tutorial. It's not very advanced at all. If you're a beginner, this is definitely for you. Um, so let's just get started right now. Now, say you want to, uh, you have like four, or five, three or four photos you want to blend into one photo. Well, this is the tutorial I'll be showing you how to do that with. So I have um, three photos I'm going to choose just at random. Um, now, basically what you want to do is to make this work really well is you want to make sure that you have the same kind of color scheme in your photo. And I'll explain that more in a few minutes. So let me just go down here and select my photos I'm going to use. Um, let's see, I was going to use see, that one, that one, and yeah. Alright, I'm going to choose these three here. Now, what you see here is they all have the same kind of, you know, they're all from the same type of event, and they all have green, and they all have the tan involved, and whatnot. Now this was from a softball game I just came from about a month ago in Hershey, Pennsylvania, so I'm using these as my go-to and to show you what to do. Now, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to resize these photos because they're really large and too large to work with, so if your photos are large like mine, you can resize them to a size that suits your um, canvas. So I'm going to do 550px for all three of them because that's what I'm going to work with for now. Now, as the tutorial goes on, I will be resizing them to a stand to a size that looks good for me, depending on what I'm going to use them for now. If you're just going to basically use them for Facebook or whatever, then you don't really need to do much else that I'm going to show you, but if you're going to make like um, a form signature or whatnot, then you'll want to resize them definitely a little bit more. So now, once you've resized your three photos to what you want to work with, then you're going to make a new canvas. So go to New, File and New. I'm clicking on Web. I'm using 1152 times 864. That's good to work with. You can go bigger if you really want to, but for me, I'm going to use those. So, yeah, my background's black. It doesn't really matter because I'm not going to see the background anyway, but, um, yeah. Now... Feel free to paste um, each photo to wherever you want to paste it. Um, I'm just doing it at random. No really set place to put them. So let's see, I'll put this one over here. And I'm going to put that one in the center. And I mean, if you have like a design technique, you want to put it somewhere special, you know, go for it. Let's see, I'm going to put that, I think, here. And then move this up a bit more, yeah. And you want to make sure that these are overlapping just a bit on top of the other images because you'll see why in a few minutes of why I'm overlapping these. Because when you blend them together, you need to have them so they overlap a bit. My canvas isn't really working too well with me right now, currently. Alright, PX. Yeah, I don't want to save those, so we're going to go. Okay, so I'm going to now move that one over here. And that looks okay for me. Now, here's where it's going to get a little tricky for some of you, maybe. If you don't know what the mask tool is, um, you're going to find out. Now, there's multiple, now there's two ways of doing this. Um, I'm going to show you the easiest way possible, um, which is using the mask tool. Um, but you're welcome to try other techniques like the eraser tool. You could certainly use the eraser tool and go around the edges and whatnot and whatnot. But the easiest way to do it for me is to use the gradient tool and a mask layer. So click on the first one, which is the topest one, the top layer here. So that one here for me is layer three. And you're going to add a mask layer, which is, the, which is the square box with the circle in it right below. Okay, click that and you're going to get that white box over here. Now over here, click on your gradient tool, which is right below your eraser tool. 
You want to make sure the black and white are in your swatches, which are set to default. If they're not set to default, just press D on your keyboard, you're good to go, and you should see black and white appear. So click here and select black and white, or white and black, whatever. Yeah. Okay, click OK. Then, now, to make this really simple for you, hold down your shift key and drag over your gradient tool. Now, holding down your shift key enables it to be a completely straight line. Because if you didn't do that, you'd probably get a whole like kabacho and this whole like sidewind line. But if you have steady hands and you can do it straight without using the shift key, that's cool. Do it that way. But for someone who isn't really too adapt with doing it straight perfectly, I use the shift key and it makes a perfectly straight line as you can see. Now, as you can see, clearly see here, it's a little, it's blended in a lot right here, which is what you want. But it doesn't seem to be blended in quite enough for me. So in that event, you are free to go over here, select the eraser tool, and with a soft round brush of um, a large size or a small size, depending on the size of your photo, you can continue to erase what you want on your photo. So I'm just going to go over here and continue to erase because I didn't like the way it came out. All right. So we got that going on right there. Now, if you don't like how your photos look on here, um, if they don't look blended in quite enough, you can always rearrange them. Um, right now, I feel like this one here shouldn't be there. It should be over here. So I'm going to move that one over there. And I'm going to move this one over here more. And I'm going to move this one to the middle. Now I'm going to move this one on top because we're going to work with that one now. So here we go. So again, you're going to add another mask layer. And then use your gradient tool again. And holding down your shift key, just go like this. And boom! That looks so cool, everybody! Yeah! And of course, I need to blend it in more because it's not blended in enough for me. So here we are, blending, blending, blending. All right. And I need to move this one over just a bit because it's not. Oops. Yeah. All right. Erase a bit more. Oops. Nope. Don't want to erase that layer. Yeah. Okay. So that looks good for me right now. Um, now, here's the other part that you're going to want to take note of because you're going to probably run into this problem <laughs> I did the first few times. Now, you already have a mask layer here, but if you try to use the gradient tool on the opposing side, watch what happens. It's going to switch sides on you. That's probably going to throw you a loop and you're going to be like, what the fuck? But here's how you fix that issue. Once you're finished with this side here, right click it and click apply mask, apply layer mask. Now, you've applied the layer mask, you're all set, no need to go any further. You can then again click the square, add, plot, add mask layer, and you can do the opposing side without any issues like such. There you go, you've done both sides now. That's how you dodge that issue. If you happen to have that issue in something you're doing, make sure that you haven't, make sure that you've applied the mask layer before you do any of the other sides of your photo. All right, and again, I'm going to go to the eraser tool, and I'm just going to erase the parts that are not usable and need to be blended in more. All right, there we go. And again, if you need to, you can move your photo so it blends in more, like that. Okay. And so basically that's mine kind of blended in. Um, it's not a very good example, but um, you know, so now what I'm going to do, because my photo looks a little weird and not really too blended in, I'm going to resize it going like this. and you'll see the effect better. So, I'm going to apply that mask layer there. 
apply that mask layer there because we're good there. And at this point, you can look at your photo and say, hey, does it really go together? Does it really blend in well? Or should I try a different photo? Now, the middle photo that I'm using here is a little lighter than this one over here. And, you know, I see that, I get that, you know, but just to show you, that's how you blend in your photos. So yours will come out totally different than mine because hopefully you'll do other things. Now, the other way of doing this without using the gradient tool is essentially just using the uh, eraser tool with a, with a soft round brush and going around all the edges, masking it at once and not having to go through the whole masking twice and whatnot. Um, but really, it's preference-wise. If you want to use the gradient tool and just, you know, once, once, and done, you know, and maybe touch up with the eraser brush, that's fine. Or you can be, or you can really go for, go, go forth and add a mask layer and just, you know, go up here and do this and then do this and what, oops, sorry. And, you know, and whatnot. So, yeah, you could totally go ahead and just use the eraser brush, um, on the whole blending in. Or you can go ahead and use a gradient tool and blend it in that way. It can go mul you can go either way. Or you can use both te techniques. You can use them both at the same time. It works. To it goes both ways. Ha! <laughs> goes both ways. <laughs> that sounds so erotic. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Anyway, so yeah, that's my tutorial on blending in. Um, at the end of the tutorial, I'm going to show you other photos I've done in the past, blending in photos, so you kind of see how it works. Um, so yeah, hope you've enjoyed this beginner's tutorial and hopefully it helps you out. Um, if you have any further questions, please feel free to comment or message me. I'm always here to help you all. And as I always say, thanks for watching and please, please subscribe. Subscribers are so cool these days. Yeah, right. <laughs>